It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, we are in the midst of Halloween week, and as part of our emphasis on some of the songs of the season, I am going back into the Daily Doug vault to access a previously recorded reaction that I filmed actually in October of 2022. So this is right about two years old, but I think it's quite worthy to share with all of y'all today. We're going to Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. And in that particular month, in October of 2022, our fan favorites emphasis was songs that go bump in the night. And there was a lot of these scarier tunes that were included in that countdown. And of course, Werewolves of London had to be a part of that countdown. So I'm very happy to share my reaction to Warren Zevon's classic Werewolves of London with y'all now. Let's move on to our next selection. Of course, we've got to include Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Thanks to Pam for putting this one into the suggestions area. Pam says this is her favorite scary monster song for Halloween. I like the upbeat tune. I am sure everyone knows it. It's a popular one. Yes, even I know this one. So this is the second. I knew uh, the, the CCR tune and I know this one. Uh, or at least I've heard it. So apparently uh, Phil Everly of the Everly Brothers joked about this idea for a song to Warren back in 1975 after they were sort of uh, watching some B horror movies and including the 1935 film Werewolf of London. And they wrote this little song up and it didn't take very long and they really didn't even take it seriously. Uh, but uh, Jackson Brown uh, is a friend uh, or was a friend of Warren and he found out about uh, this tune and started performing it in his own live shows. And uh, some other friends and peers followed suit. They thought it was a fun song to play uh, live. So finally, Warren and, and, and his group of musicians recorded the song, which according to uh, guitarist uh, Wadi Wachtel, uh, the song was pretty hard to nail down in the studio to get it just right. And uh, they tried uh, several different lineups of musicians before liking the sounds that were brought to them by uh, Mick Fleetwood and John McPhee. So how about that? I never knew this. Warren Zevon is on pianos and vocals. But Mick Fleetwood plays the drums on this. And the bass player from Fleetwood Mac, John McPhee, plays the bass on this track would have never guessed that uh and a uh, good old wadi wachtel is there on the guitar so uh i think we could all sing along and play along let's uh tune in to werewolves of london from warren zevon here we go <laughs> good old three chord rock and roll song, right? I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand. And I think the Walking best the first line of a song the ever. I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand. Hmm. So the chords are D, down to C, and down to G repeat all major chords is it D mixolydian or is it in G major same difference it's just a real easy groove you know it's easy to just get lost in it and let your hair down and just have some fun, you know? And it's fun to sing.
the hairy handed gent who ran a muck in Kent. Lately he's been overheard in Mayfair. So he's in Kent, he's in Mayfair. Him. Stay Don't away from him. Out, He'll rip your lungs out, Jim. I'd like to meet his tailor. I'd like to meet his tailor. When I read through it, again, I'm like, it got me thinking about it in a different way. And then I found a, uh, a quote about it that I'll share with you in a sec. Well, I saw Lon Chaney walking with the queen. Lon Chaney, the historic actor, right? I saw Lon Chaney Jr. walking with the queen. His hair was perfect. So I was trying to figure out how literal is he being of course it's a fun song it's but uh you know there's elements to it like what actually is he talking about um and i found a a, a quote from jackson brown and uh, jackson said that to him the song is about a well-dressed ladies man who preys on ladies uh and it becomes sort of this victorian nightmare uh and the werewolf is in fact a gigolo and he's in gambling clubs he consorts with prostitutes he squanders his money uh he's all over the place he's in kent he's in mayfair and and all of the meaning from this and from jackson's point of view really is synthesized in the line i'd like to meet his tailor and then uh, i was noticing you know later on and his hair was perfect like he's done all this stuff but man he looks great doesn't he um it's uh it takes on a slightly more um, sort of socially sad <laughs> uh, uh, point of view uh, and less uh, sort of just fun uh, when you think about it that way. But it's um, it, 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 it allows it to hit home in a slightly different way for me this time, having done the work of reading in, putting the lyrics there and just double checking the information instead of just going on my recollection oh yeah i've heard that song before uh you know similar things with uh other tunes that we've heard is like oh i never knew that and so that's what happens when you take a a little bit of a closer look into some of these classic tunes you know friends i remarked elsewhere in this long fan favorites video that i really don't like horror movies at all i I'm serious, y'all. I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> I'm a delicate flower, y'all. As a matter of fact, I've actively avoided scary movies for most of my life. Ever since I was a little kid, I'm like, okay, movie, cool. Uh, that is scary. I don't think I'm going to spend my time watching that. I mean, seriously, here are some of the movies that I have avoided actively avoided watching all i've never seen halloween the shining uh poltergeist rosemary's baby uh psycho nightmare on elm street any of them uh get out uh alien any of the alien things arachnophobia that one i actually half saw at a friend's house i think when i was in high school and i i was not okay y'all spiders freak the hell out of me and i don't think i made it through um most of that um that movie i don't know how it ends i don't want to know how it ends i mean come on i think the scariest movie i've actually ever seen that's a hard one that's a hard one maybe silence of the lambs but that's more of a psychological thriller those i don't mind but the gory stuff the things where people are just getting hacked to bits Texas Chainsaw Massacre, no thank you. No thank you. But songs like Werewolves of London are, are really great because it gives us um, 
an opportunity to take a look at something that on the surface might be scary or frightening and turn it into something that we could have a little bit of fun with, especially when a character that likes to prey on innocent victims is made into a different kind of character that likes to prey on innocent victims. We just made him into a gigolo instead of an actual werewolf, and we have a bit of fun with it. And uh, that's that. That's kind of a great thing about music. Sometimes we can really go for the gore uh, with our words and with the sounds that the music is making. And sometimes we can just bop along to some to a song that's got three major chords in it, and be on the periphery of it all, but still but still have some fun with the uh, kind of the the ethos of the season. It's the scary season, right? Halloween is, is coming up upon us. And so it was fun today to share this uh, classic reaction from October of 2022 from our Songs That Go Bump in the Night fan favorites. This has been Werewolves of London from Warren Zevon. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.